So that, guys, is it for the 2019 US Grand Prix race that was pretty good and had plenty of exciting moments in it, especially in the midfield. And in this video, we're going to try and quickly review the events of the Grand Prix. But first, let's look at the official result of the Grand Prix. So winning the race is Valtteri Bottas, but in second place is Lewis Hamilton, who is now your sixth time Drivers World Champion and your 2019 Drivers World Champion. Third, Max Verstappen. Fourth is Charles Leclerc. Fifth, Albon. Sixth, Ricardo. Seventh, Norris. Eighth is uh, Carlos Sainz. Ninth, Hulkenberg. Tenth, Perez. And then finishing out of the points, but finishing the race, Raikkonen, Kvyat, Stroll, Giovinazzi, Grosjean, Gasly, Russell, and Magnussen. Gasly, for some reason, did three pit stops, two of them in the final three laps for some reason. And your only retirement's Kubica and Vettel but now let's get into the teams and first off Mercedes and again massive congratulations to Lewis Hamilton for getting his sixth world championship very very well deserved he's drove so well this season not been I think the absolute best he's been but he's still very close to it and today drove very well to finish in second place getting ahead of the two Ferraris at the start and then going after Max Verstappen. And in the end, after doing one pit stop less, had enough speed to beat Max Verstappen. And that's why Lewis, for me, was the driver of the day in the Grand Prix. But Valtteri Bottas was, I think mainly because of grid position in the race, was deserving of winning the race because Valtteri had a very good speed at the front of the field. And I think did deserve to win the race. But because of his performance in the you know second half of the race, Lewis Hamilton, great, great drive. Valtteri though, again, great drive for him. Winning the race, another race victory. Again, proving the doubters wrong. Great to see that. And Mercedes get a 1-2 finish and continue to showcase their dominance in Formula 1. And Lewis Hamilton and this team, Mercedes, and even Valtteri Bottas to a point if he does keep up his current performances going into 2020, they are going to be very, very hard to beat. That is for sure. Next up, Ferrari. What absolute clown show this was. So second and fourth on the grid, Leclerc drops behind Lewis Hamilton at the start. Sebastian Vettel goes from second down to seventh place. I think it was because of a bad start and maybe some cold tyres as well, but what absolutely cataclysmic start for Sebastian Vettel. And then his rear suspension fails after going over the rumble strips at turn 9, I believe. Now, those rumble strips are not supposed to break the suspension, but you arguably shouldn't be out there anyway. I know you're pushing hard, but... It's kind of, you know, the track's fault, but also the driver for being out there in the first place. So I'm not going to blame anyone 100% on that, but that's how Vettel retired from the race. And then Charles Leclerc didn't do anything today. He was a second a lap off the pace, had no speed at all, was actually closer to the midfield in this race than he was to the top three. And Ferrari were dreadful. And... Ferrari just continue to showcase why they cannot compete for a world championship at the moment. Because even if they do qualify well, as we've seen in Suzuka and Mexico, they still cock it up. Even if they have, say at the start of the race, a good grip position to maybe, you know, make a move down to turn one, like they had today with Sebastian Vettel. They turned that into Vettel being in 7th place. Just all around as a team, Ferrari are nowhere near ready to win a world championship. Nowhere near. They can lock out the front row as many times as they want, but with that race pace, that hideous, disgusting race pace compared to what their qualifying pace was like, there's no point in them even competing at the front of the field because that's how slow they are. Awful day. And they need to properly now really start to look inwards at their own problems. This is not because of the track condition or because of the temperatures. It's just them designing a horrible car for the races. Next up is Red Bull. 
Max Verstappen, uh, good drive, got up to second, great move around the outside of Sebastian Vettel. And then after that, really, I think he did well to compete with Lewis Hamilton for so long because clearly the Mercedes car was the faster car. Max did well, to be honest, to be so close in the end. I know he was on fresher tyres, but that Mercedes of Lewis Hamilton was just way faster than uh, the Red Bull car. And Max did very well to be in that position. And I think Max drove well today, but again, just didn't have the car to really get that result we were maybe expecting, such as a race victory. And clearly, uh, Mercedes had the best car today, but at least it's his first podium since Singapore. And in the Brazilian Grand Prix, uh, which is coming up next, a Grand Prix he should have won last year. I'm sure he'll be back up there again. But Alex Albon, bit of a shame at the start. He um, got unlucky with contact with, I think, Carlos Sainz and kind of Charles Leclerc as well at the start and had to drop back to the back after a pit stop and then did a three-stop race, I believe, and came through to finish in fifth. So, yeah, good pace, good coming through the field, but it could have been better if he didn't have that accident because Charles Leclerc and the Ferrari were so slow, he probably would have finished ahead of Leclerc because there was like a 50-second gap between Verstappen and Leclerc, and Albon surely would have filled that gap. So could have been better, but an all-right drive of a Red Bull. They've outscored Ferrari, who of course they're not going to catch in the constructors, but I think a good day for Red Bull Racing, for sure. And now into the midfield. First off, Renault. Daniel Ricciardo finishing in sixth place. Great drive. One of the drives of the day. Another great drive, just like Mexico. And Daniel should be very happy and proud of his performance because I don't think his car was actually the quickest in the midfield. I still think the McLaren was a bit quicker today. And Norris also was also um, right behind Ricardo, I believe. I'm not, I don't know this for sure, but he was right behind Daniel Ricciardo at the end of the Grand Prix. So, very good drive by Daniel, and he does deserve to finish in sixth place. Hulkenberg also good drive to finish in ninth. The soft tyres eventually did work at the very end to pass Perez and Gasly, but it probably could have been better today for Hulkenberg. I don't know why. Starting P11, I expected maybe 8th or even 7th place, considering Albon being, you know, down the field at times and Vettel being out of the race. So it could have been better, but ninth is still good. And Renault, I think, are probably now going to finish in P5 uh, in the Constructors. Next up, McLaren. And yeah, I think McLaren did have the best car today. Lando Norris drived, uh, drived, that's not even a word, drove very, very well today to finish in 7th place. Almost got Daniel Ricciardo at the end. Carlos Sainz, I think... Um, might have suffered some damage with that contact of Albon because he didn't look the same after that compared to Norris and Ricardo. So, yeah, I think Sainz was a bit unlucky there, but good result for McLaren, 10 points, and they are, of course, going to finish P4 on the Constructor, so looking great for McLaren. Next up, Alpha. Alpha still don't have a good car, but Kimi Raikkonen drove very, very well today to finish in P11 in a car that, let's be honest, is not that quick to be in that position. So I think Kimi drove very well today, a track where he won it last year. And Antonio Giovinazzi just had no pace at all. But Alpha, again, no points. Their last time they finished in the points was Singapore. Uh, and yet that continues yet again. For Haas F1... No pace. They're just praying 2020 comes a bit sooner. Next up, Toro Rosso. Now, they were looking as though they were going to, once the race finished, finish ahead of Racing Point at the end of the race and be ahead in the Constructors' fight. But after Daniel Kvyat passed uh, Sergio Perez for P10, it appears he did it either under yellow flags or closed up a bit too soon under those yellow flags to get a move done. So Kvyat drops down. And Gasly, his race fell apart at the end there. And I feel really sorry for him because 
He was consistently in the top 10 all weekend, and he really did have a great weekend. So Gasly, I think you have to say, um, great weekend, but just a shame how the tyre difference uh, meant he had to not finish in the points at the end. But Toro Rosso, a good weekend, but just unfortunate with the circumstances of what happened at the end of the race. And the last midfield team racing point, Sergio Perez, great drive from the pit lane to P10, exactly as I predicted. And that puts now racing point ahead of Toro Rosso in the constructors for sixth place. And realistically, that is the highest racing point can get this season. A great drive by him. And Stroll had a rather difficult race where he uh, did three pit stops and really didn't have any pace. And Williams, of course, were at the very, very back. But guys, that is it for the 2019 US Grand Prix. And I cannot wait now for the next race in Brazil, which should be, after last year's race, a very good one.